In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to vectorize or trace using the US Cutter Edition of Vinyl Master Cut. If you'd like to know where to get the more advanced vectorizer, please go to the end of this lesson for more details. The first thing I want to do is explain to you the difference between vectorizing and contour cutting. A lot of people get confused between the two, so what I'll do here is I'll come up to Images and I'll click on Import Image, and I'm going to select this one here and bring that in. Now, if I zoom in a little bit on that, this is an image, it's a picture. So if I go into wireframe mode, you can see there's no cutting path here for the plotter or the cutter to follow around to cut out these different colors to form this uh, picture of a plumber. So to better illustrate that, let me just bring up paint, which I've done here. And you can see here it's uh, 1,310 pixels by 1,432 pixels. That's the actual number of pixels across by the number of pixels down. Now if I zoom right into this, you can see what I mean by pixels. And I've also done a lesson on images, so you can always watch that lesson. Um, that goes into far greater detail than I'll go to here. But you can see how you've got these little black dots and these skin colored dots um, and this like shiny part of the nose here and they're made out of little pixels. Now, there's no cutting information here for the cutter to follow. So we need to turn this information, these shapes, into vectors, in which are lines and curves. And there's also a lesson on that as well, so you can watch that for more information about what those things are. But essentially what we need to do is find the perimeter of this shape and turn that into a set of lines and curves that the cutter can then follow around on our on our vinyl or our media. So I'll zoom out of that now. So I'll minimize paint. So what's the difference between vectorizing and contour cutting? Well, contour cutting is actually printing the artwork and then cutting a line around the outside of it or the perimeter of it to then peel that out and basically create a decal or a sticker. So I would print this onto some maybe a white media and then I'd load it back into my cutter and I'd cut an outline around this thing. Now I'll show you what I mean by that. If I go to page 2 here, you can see this one here is a contour cut and this one over here is actually made up of separate pieces which I can then send to the vinyl cutter and cut these out as separate individual colours. So that's the difference between the two. This one is print and then contour cut and this one is sent to the vectorizer, and all the individual parts are created as separate vectors which I can then send to my vinyl cutter. And in this lesson, we're going to focus on vectorizing. So let me go to a new page here. So I'm going to import another image, which will be this one here. And I'll paste that into the center of the screen there. OK, so again, we have another image. And if I go to wireframe mode, you can clearly see that the information here, there's nothing there to cut. Whereas if I go back to this other document, you can see that this plumber that's been vectorized, you, can, you have all these little bits and pieces which have been created from the artwork that you can send to the cutter. So go back here and out of wireframe. So OK, I'll select the image and we want to vectorize this. And when I select an image in Vinyl Master, you'll see the vectorize button comes up here. Um, you can also access it from the images menu here. And if I click this button, the vectorizer loads up. And it basically does a raw trace of the image. It just simply finds the perimeter and presents that to us in this particular view. And you can see the background, being white, is automatically considered to be transparent. That's by default. I can turn that off. If I want to trace the white uh, square, I can do that, or I can turn that back off. The first thing you'll notice is, OK, we've got the original, and we've got the traced, or the raw trace down here. But the colors don't quite match. So you can see that we've got red, this blue, and this orange color, but there's no green. So to add that, we click on this button here number of colors to try. So we add extra colors and by default the program quickly just finds that green is missing. So it's very easy to get the colors sorted out by adding them here. If I keep adding colors you can see it keeps finding more and more colors. These colors here are the fringing around the fringes of the original artwork up here. But we don't want all those so I can just simply go back down to what makes sense here which is these one, two, three, four, five colors which we can see in the original and we can now see in the raw trace. OK. So as much as I can add colors to the raw trace here, I can actually remove them as well by right-clicking on these color patches down here. 
So for example, if I just wanted to focus in on this word here, De France, what I could do is right click on these colors like so, and you can see they've been removed from the trace. And if I click trace now, all, all that would be trace would be this word here, De France. So it's a good way of z uh, zeroing in on the colors that you do want to trace. So I just want to get the orange, I just right click on these colors, and then I'll have the orange area. So this is a powerful uh, set of tools down here that you can use. Also, the other thing I must mention is you can silhouette. In other words, just turn all the artwork into black, black and white, basically, and turn that off like so. Okay, so that's how we affect what gets traced. Now, the next thing is, how is it traced? So the raw trace will just basically follow the exact path of the pixels, and of course, you'll get staircasing and all sorts of funny uh, results. So what we've got over here are the trace options. Now, the trace mode is basically, when I click on this, you'll see if I click there, these settings will change accordingly. So these are just presets or defaults that we've created, which generally work quite well. So I can set things like smoothing, corners and level of detail to retain, and I can also replace the source image. What that actually means is that if I check that on and click trace then accept, the original um, image that we have here will be deleted. Okay, so it's important that you know that. So if you uncheck that, the, you will end up with a trace and the original image, and I'll show you what happens when you do that. Solid contours only. If I check that on, what that will do is it will ignore all the holes, and it will just trace the outline. So none of these holes inside the strawberry will, will be kept or inside the text here. So that's what that does. So these are the most important tools of the vectorizer. Smoothing, corners, and the level of detail to retain. So what are these things? Well, smoothing's all about how smooth these sweeping shapes are created. For example, if this strawberry had, say, uh, like a, a shallow section here, and you had smoothing set all the way to the right, what the program will probably do is just make the entire shape here smooth and would ignore any sort of imperfections. If I put this right back down like this, any imperfections will be picked up. So what smoothing's all about is the balance between following the shape exactly as it is versus making it nice and smooth because that's the way it was originally designed and the artwork you have isn't that great or it didn't trace that well. So all of these settings are on a case-by-case -case basis. If you have artwork that's pretty good like this, then you'd probably set smoothing at about 0.5 because that's around halfway. It's a, a good balance between picking up imperfections and making things, uh, making the shapes as aesthetically pleasing as the program can. So that's what smoothing's about. Whereas corners, what that's doing is it's looking for, if you set it up high, anything that is close to a corner and may or the program would consider it should be a sharp, uh, like a 90 degree corner, for example, it will actually snap those in. So it will take this artwork and slightly modify it when it creates the, the final vectors. So in this corner of the bottom corner of the E here, if I have corners all the way up to one here, that may well snap a 90 degree corner in there as it would on this blue one and around these shapes here at the, at the edges of all these letters. And it may well snap them in. So in, in text like this where you don't want sharp corners, you would set this again, probably around about halfway. But if this was, say, Arial, this text here was in Arial or uh, Arial Black or something like that, like a very sharp like a sans serif font, you would then definitely set corners up to be high. You might set it to 0.75, for example. But in this case, given this artwork, we'll set it to 0.5. Now, level of detail to retain. What that's talking about is how smaller pixels are actually traced. So if you've got little clumps of pixels all over the place, the last thing you want to do is trace those because they're just going to make the artwork more complicated and more difficult to weed, etc. So the level of detail to retain is usually backed off and in this case, again, I'd say it about halfway. Um, you don't want to miss bits and pieces of this artwork, but at the same time, you don't want to pick up every little tiny pixel. So again, these things are all a balance depending on what the artwork looks like. And, you know, all artwork is a little bit different to others. So, you know, this just comes down to using the program and getting used to how it works. Uh, but it's, it's fairly self-explanatory. And if you use the default settings here, default logo or text, you'll find that, generally speaking, it's quite accurate. Now uncheck this as I said I would, and I'm now going to trace this at 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, and let's see what the results look like. So you can see the program goes through, traces it, creates the vectors, and look, it comes out very well. 
because this artwork's actually not bad artwork to begin with. So you can see it's made a nice smooth shape here. And if I'd set smoothing up higher, it might be a little bit more rounded. Um, but in this case, I think that's quite, um, quite a good result. So if I click Accept now, this will load back into the program as vectors. And because I've unchecked replace, uh, replace source image, what that means is that the original image that we've got below here won't be deleted. If I check this on, this image will be deleted once I click Accept. So I'll uncheck that. <coughs> I'll click Accept. And you can now see the artwork is loaded. And I have the vector artwork on top of the bitmap image or the image itself, as you can see here. So I'll undo that. And you can see it's a very faithful um, trace because the vectors are see-through. If I go to wireframe mode, you can see the vectors sitting on top of the traced bitmap. And it's done a very good job. Now that won't always be the case. I mean, you might load in some artwork. I'll just move that off so you can see the difference between the two. Zoom out a little bit and go back and wireframe. You may well get some artwork which isn't as good a quality as this and it won't come out this well. <clears throat> and what you'll have to do in that case is probably go back into the vectorizer and try some other settings, bring those in and see what you think. The good thing is, is that you can always edit these curves. Now there's a whole lesson on editing curves and you can watch that. But basically to edit this I'd need to ungroup it up here as you can see, because it's currently grouped, because once something's traced, it comes in grouped. So I can ungroup that. And now that's all separate pieces, as you can see, like that. And if I wanted to modify the strawberry a little bit, because I wasn't quite happy with that sweeping bend there, for example, or your client wasn't, however, whatever the situation was, I can come in here and, you know, I can edit these nodes to get different results. And I can you know, modify this as I, as I please. So that's a great way of converting images into cuttable artwork. And if I select that and send that to my cutter, I'll separate by colour here. And you can see all the individual colours that would then be sent to the vinyl cutter. And you'd load in red and you'd cut out red. You'd load in orange and cut out orange and so forth. And, uh, and, and you'd end up with the artwork all cut out and you'd lay it out on the job. Um, and you'd end up with this uh, logo and text as you've originally had it from the client when they've given it to you as, a, as an image. And that's what vectorizing is all about. It's about taking an image, finding all the perimeters or the, the edges here and applying vector paths to them. So when you go into vectorize, just be aware that smoothing corners and level of detail to retain uh, will affect the way this is traced. The colors here when you add extra colors or you right click to remove colors will affect what is actually traced and you've also got zoom out and zoom in tools and there are a few more tools up here um, that you can use like you can crop out parts of the image that you might only want to trace a certain part of the image um, you can change the split screen like so and go to split view uh, zoom to all you can undo things that you've done um, and that's generally how the vectorizer works. Now obviously this is Vinyl Master Cut and the vectorizer we have here is the basic vectorizer. The most, the more advanced vectorizer, I mean I can show you that now, I'll load that up. Okay so here I've got Vinyl Master Pro which I've loaded up to show you and I've used the demo so that you can download and install the demo and try it for yourself and have the same tools and features that we've got here. So here's the same artwork, again it's a bitmap like just before and you'll now see there's more tools here but I'll click on vectorizer like so. And you'll see the vectorizer that loads up now has got more tools on the left hand side here and more tools over here. Again the add the colors is the same uh, situation as last time but for example if I wanted to make say this orange sweeping bend here the same as this blue one I could click the blue color go flood fill area and do this and you can see that now I've got these this shape here is now the same color as that shape. I can, for example, change just that C there to a different color by clicking on it like that. And I can also use the paintbrush to do the same thing. So if I clicked on red here and I wanted to make this part of it, this part of the E red like this or this part of the F red like that, I can do things like this. So these tools give you a lot more options over what you're going to trace. They can modify the artwork and sometimes this is very useful. I mean, sometimes you load an artwork and you need to do these things. In this particular example you don't uh, and I can show you an example where that is the case. I'll just bring in this one here. 
So say for example I want to trace this shape here or this this uh, this artwork, I click vectorize and it loads it in like so and you can see it automatically adjusts the view. Now in this case you can see how the yellow part or the blonde part of this hair isn't being picked up. So what you can do is you can add a trace color. So you can click on this button here, click on that color and you'll see that it adds it to the list by simply selecting with the color picker a color in the actual original artwork and it applies it and now that will be traced. Another example, I won't go too far into these things, but another example you will find is some fringing. Which I'll zoom in a lot closer than that. You can see here how this sort of dark colour and this light colour, there's these fringing colours in between. If I uncheck this, you can see how they disappear and it creates like this sort of open area. If I right click to bring that colour back. So what's happening here is, is when the program uh, does a raw trace, it finds the edges here and it finds these fringing colours. So we want to get rid of those. So this is where we use the magic brush for example. So if I click on the magic brush and then just left click along here, like so, you can see it removes all this fringing or this the red edge that was there. So I click on undo, you can see there's this red edge here. I'll see if I can zoom in a bit more for you. You can definitely see these red pixels here. So if I can go to the magic brush and just go over that area, you'll find they just disappear. So that's another example of these tools and there's plenty more of them there that you can use. Another uh, set of tools that are very important, I'll just go to zoom out, zoom all, uh, these image correction tools. So these are a much more advanced set of tools for dealing with more complicated artwork. And they can automatically correct the artwork. You can add detail, remove detail, despeckle, which is dealing with uh, similar to level of detail to retain. But what this does, it actually removes it altogether from the artwork, so it doesn't get traced at all. So if you've got artwork that's got um, peculiar bits and pieces in it, by clicking on despeckle, um, you can remove clumps of, of unwanted uh, information or unwanted artwork by using these tools here. It's got an auto adjust as well. So this actually makes dealing with the artwork itself um, and preparing it ready before tracing so that what you trace, you're not, you're not wasting your time basically. So these are quite advanced and they're very useful tools. But again, like I was saying earlier, it really does depend on the artwork you're working with. Um, if you're just doing very basic things, then the simple vectorizer is quite okay. As soon as you start, a, start doing more complex artwork and dealing with more difficult situations, then you really do need the more powerful vectorizer. So I hope that explains that to you. So if you were interested in getting that um, better vectorizer, what you can do is come up and grab an internet browser like this. You can go to fcws3.com um, and if you scroll down here, uh, it will show you, you can click here to buy the upgrade. Um, you can also learn about why you would upgrade. So if I click on, for example, DSR, which we were just looking at a moment ago, it loads it up there and you can see these are the sorts of reasons so in addition to cut letter and pro so if you have all those versions or pro you get all this ex extra tools and features um, extras as in you know fonts and logos and all the rest of it um, and if you wish to upgrade you, well you can click on the buy button here and click upgrade license this window that opens up you just type in your product serial number you follow it through the good thing about this is once the order is processed you immediately get back the new PSN and a download link and you can instantly download and activate the software and start cutting with it, designing and cutting immediately. Um, and you can also do it from the US Cutter website, so go to uscutter.com. Uh, if you get to the Vinyl Master section, that will load up and you will see uh, the upgrade section here. You click on that um, and that loads up and again you click on this and it will take you to the cart. And that concludes this lesson. Uh, thanks for watching.